Well, we're here with another Tech Talk with Paul and Al, and he's got a little piece of history here. Yeah. So we're going to take a look at it. What you got, Paul? Well, one of my antique boards. I came with this the other day. Let me get over there where I can see it. It is a quack medical machine. A what? Quack. Quack medical machine. And it's not all here. This is a high voltage source. Mm -hmm. It's an induction coil. Mm -hmm. And you can put things in here to get uh, high voltage out of it. They make these today with a plug into the house current. And there's a knob on the back you adjust to get uh, high voltage for testing the insulation on motors and transformers and things. This one has the induction coil, part of it here, part of it here. And this is just how many capacitors are in the circuit for efficiency. It looks like a little hand. You're supposed to have an assortment of little glass tubes with mercury in them mm -hmm. that produce ultraviolet light and a tingling sensation when you rub it over the skin. Mm -hmm. It was uh, a therapy. It did absolutely nothing, but it looked cool. The neatest part about this is the original power cord and the original power connector. Mm -hmm. uh, turn of the century, the two-prong outlet as we know it didn't exist. Mm -hmm. If you had electricity, they hung a uh, string, a string of cord down from the ceiling with a socket and a light bulb on the end, usually in the middle of the room or over your dining table. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if you wanted to plug in an appliance, you unscrewed the light bulb and plugged in your appliance, or screwed in your appliance. Or you got a two bulb adapter that lets you have a bulb and an appliance, like a toaster or an iron or something. Well, this screws into a lamp socket. And I need to find something a little more authentic than this. It's the only lamp I had that wasn't being used. And that one may be a little bit cracked. Is the lamp turned off? It's unplugged. <clears throat> I'm not crazy. Well, I am, but anyway. I've not plugged this in before. But there we have an electrical connection. And we'll do this the same way and use an amp meter to see if it pulls any current. And I know there's a, where is the plug? There it is. And we have that on the lowest possible range. There's an on off switch on it. Okay, so far so good. Doesn't need to pull any current. No guarantee that it'll work at all. <clears throat> and it may not. I haven't owned it out yet. What is that you're adjusting? Well, this is the spark gap. And this is like a Model T Ford. There's an electromagnet that would cause this to buzz. And you adjust it for the most efficiency. And you get high voltage out of here but I'm not getting any kind of, well, you think about that. So I need to ohm this out and see if it's got an open switch or an open coil or the contacts need uh, filing. Capacitor needs changing. Well, that's the least of my worries, but I thought we might get a spark, but we're not so far. But the neatest part was that this has the original plug on it. So I'll play with this another day and maybe... Well, that's the question we got from one of our viewers. I thought you might answer while we've got this lamp here. Yeah. They're trying to figure out how you do three-way bulbs. Oh, that's easy. That's easy. Three-way bulb is a light bulb with two filaments inside. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have one handy here. But... If you look down in the light side, <coughs> we're unplugged here. There's the outside, which is ground. 
the normal center pin, which is your usual contact for a light bulb, and this second pin, which contacts a ring on the bottom of a two-way or three-way bulb, mm -hmm. which gives you access to the other filament. So you run one filament or the other filament or both filaments. Mm -hmm. So if you had a 50-watt lamp and a 100-watt lamp, a filament in the same lamp, you'd have 50, 100, 150. Hmm. So you get three wattages out of one bulb by using either or or both of the filaments. So I will play with this at a later date and have you back over when I get it buzzing. But this will produce about 15 or 20,000 volts of uh, very staticky high voltage. Mm -hmm. But I thought this one neat that it has the original plug. I bet they cost them. a lot of radio interference. Tons of it. But radio hadn't been invented yet. Now, the original radio transmitter uh -huh. that uh, Marconi went on the air with, you're looking at it. Uh -huh. A vibrating spark, spark contact and a high voltage transformer. You take that and a uh, capacitor and form a tuned circuit mm -hmm. and it produces very crude radio waves. Mm -hmm. So you've got spark, induction, capacitance, you've got a radio transmitter sitting right here. Mm -hmm. But this one was used to make a crude high voltage to make these little glass vials glow this lovely violet purple, which was ultraviolet light, which is supposed to be good for you. And you put it on your skin, and there's this little tingling feeling of the high voltage coming through the glass. And it makes the, glow, the glass glow brighter as you touch your skin with it. Hmm. Very therapeutic. But I thought that Sounds very fun. dangerous, actually. Well, when you mm -hmm. consider that this is all hot chassis, mm -hmm. one side of the line is connected to this. There's a coil in here. Give me a second to... Uh, there's the original instructions. Find a screwdriver. And take these screws out. Yeah, all hot chassis. No warnings about shock hazard. Well, I heard they had some of these and they killed people, actually. And that movie uh, about the guy who invented oh, wow. the cornflakes or had the cornflakes had a had a had a clinic, and they were shocked. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that helped health food and yeah, uh, yeah. Cause they were they were shocking people. They, they like to do that and uh, killed somebody. It wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, the insides of this are beautiful. Pick this up, and inside it's just a little wooden box with a coil that pulls this vibrating reed down. There's your capacitors, on-off switch, little electrical tape on the cord. I think it's possibly the on-off switch. Could be. I'll find out and let you know. It's very, very simple. Runs off house current. And uh, they made a fortune selling these, I'm sure. But they turn up all the time on the antique markets. Is it possible this was designed for a DC system? No. Well, it would probably run on DC as well as AC, but I think the label on it, uh, let's see the Virex Electric Company, Madison Street, Chicago, Illinois, 110 volt AC or DC. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't matter. Wouldn't matter at all. So, this will be fun. It's a shame the little glass vials are missing, but they'll turn up. A lot of things at the turn of the century that you couldn't get away with today. Hot chassis devices, no grounding, no warnings. Uh, these aren't particularly dangerous because of the... The voltage is high, but there's a certain frequency involved with mm -hmm. the, the spark, so it tends to travel over the surface of your skin instead of penetrating. Mm -hmm. So, I thought this was... But neat. anything they could find to make a buck. And it, as it is today. But I'll get this running. We'll play with it again sometime. I was hoping maybe it would fire right up, but it didn't. And I had to find a lamp to screw it into because I didn't want to cut the end of the cord off. So, that was interesting. What now, what's a Dormeyer? It's a fancy mixer. It, it was like a Sunbeam or a Hamilton Beach. And that would have been a kitchen mixer in the 40s or 50s, back when people still cooked. 
uh, this generation doesn't realize that the world didn't always have instant cake and frozen waffles. And if you wanted to make a cake, you had to beat the cake batter forever and just about break your arm in the process. I bet well, that still works. With an electric mixer, well, we're going to find out. Uh, oh. eh, those had a rough life. Yeah, look at that. Matching bowls. Matching bowls. Fire King. The man you can come look this, uh, come yeah, up. I will in just a second. And uh, that's twenty dollars. It's worth it for the bowls. Yeah, I don't know if they're original or not, but yeah, they're good glass bowls. Let's uh, go back this way and let's see what he's got out here in the van. Uh, Hamilton Beach, Sunbeam, Universal. Let's go in here with the amp meter so we can keep an eye on things. Yep. This reminds me of the three stooges in the pen that wrote under sour cream. Yeah. Or whipped cream. Whipped cream, yeah. Yeah. If you want to make a cake or uh, brownies, you, you're combining uh, flour and sugar <coughs> and milk and lard. Mm -hmm. And trying to get those three things to combine to make a fluffy cake, you'd have a big bowl and a spoon and you'd be doing this for an hour mm -hmm. to get that to combine. A cake used to be a big event. That's why birthday cake was such a big thing. You got a cake on your birthday because it took your mother all day to make it. Mm -hmm. You didn't just open a box and throw it, throw in a, uh, an egg and a, and a cup of milk and stir it, and throw it in the oven. It took mm -hmm. all day to make a cake. Mm -hmm. So with this, you could throw your ingredients in this, turn it off for 10 minutes, come back, you had a cake batter. So this made life a lot simpler. Oh, mm -hmm. looky. 78s. In case you haven't figured out, we bought some estate sale leftovers today. Turkish March. Yeah. A broken record. Quite broken. Classical. Classical. Hmm. Fine and dandy polka. Interesting. Nothing real exciting, but interesting. What else we got? What is broken? got a broken record somewhere. Well, there's broken one somewhere. I got a, a lead from an antique dealer friend that there was a lady trying to clear out an estate and was I interested and I thought, well, what the heck, I'll go look and the price got pretty good so we just bought the whole thing. That's not bad.